thank you very much, Jerry and, uh, and and Harriet. Bless your heart. Thank you so much for uh, for opening up your uh, wow, beautiful, beautiful home on, a, on an absolutely gorgeous day. Uh, Jerry, as uh, as he mentioned, uh, was really one of the one of the prime movers uh, behind our campaign when I ran against a Democratic incumbent. Uh, back in 1994, he mentioned his name. But uh, what he did mention that the, the campaign uh, was run. <laughs> the Democratic uh, consultants who ran that campaign were fresh off having run Bill Clinton's campaign in 1992, named James Carville and Paul Begal. They ran uh, the, the campaign against me in 1994, and we were one of two people that beat a Democratic incumbent in that year. <coughs> I remind people that Mitt Romney ran that same year. Uh, in 1994, and he ran against Ted Kennedy, and I kid you not, he ran to the left of Ted Kennedy in that race. I'm kidding you not. If you go look at the last debate, he ran to the left of Kennedy and, that, and lost uh, in Massachusetts. So we ran far to the right of my, uh, of, of my opponent. We ran as a conservative in a tough state, and we stood up for the values that, uh, that I continue to stand up for here today. And we're able to uh, to be victorious. And I always say that if you're looking for someone who's been there, been consistent, and has been able to win in a difficult state and uh, stand up for uh, for the values that that we all share, uh, we've been able to do that. So I, I want to thank you, Jerry, for for being there at the very beginning and uh, for helping us out uh, in the Pittsburgh area. Thank you, sweetheart, for uh, I meant her, not you. <laughs> 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 for helping us out. Uh, she's been here, as she mentioned, almost two months and has been traveling around with, uh, with Alexa Newman up here in the, in the Spartanburg, uh, Greenville area and, and representing me all over the place. So I just want to thank her and want to thank a couple of other special people here. My, my campaign chairman, uh, Gresham Barrett. Gresham, who uh, uh, I got a chance to know when he was, he was in Congress and I was in the House. And uh, Gresham has been a, you know, came out for me very early on and has, has just been a great ambassador for us. <laughs> Uh, throughout the state of South Carolina, really helping us navigate the shoals of politics here. And uh, I just want to thank you very, very much, Gresham, for all, all that your help and support. And, and Bob Castellani, Bob is my uh, finance chairman here in, uh, in South Carolina and, and helping us out. And I just want to uh, thank him for also jumping on and, and uh, being there when uh, my lumbers were even lower than they are now. Uh, so, uh, but we've, we, just to talk about that a little bit, we feel like our uh, – our campaign is right, believe it or not, right exactly where we hope we'd be. Uh, we are we are the campaign that has not had, not been the flavor of the month. We haven't had our our our, our boom and bust. Uh, we we hear everywhere we go, whether it's here in South Carolina or in Iowa, New Hampshire, that people say we really like what you're saying. We re we wish you got more time. Uh, you know, you're 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 saying exactly what we'd like you to say and. And, and you're on my list. You know, if we could just, if, if, if you could win, we'd be for you. And so, <laughs> and so my answer was, well, when they call you on the phone, say you're for me, and then people will think I can win. <laughs> so, you know, we, we just feel like we're going to need a, a moment uh, or two or three. Uh, we're, we're a little different than I think most of the campaigns out there in the sense that, um, you know, we're, we're sort of the, the, the tortoise in this race. We're just out there. We're running the race. I just did my 78th county in Iowa, uh, and, and uh, we're going to hit all 99 in that state. We just announced over 200 caucus coordinators in Iowa. Uh, there's about 1,500 caucus locations. So we're up to about 200, and uh, we expect to be at at least 500 uh, by, uh, by Christmas time. And, we, we feel like we're going to have the by far the best campaign organization uh, in the uh, in the state of Iowa, and it's a caucus, not a primary. So we, you have to go on a Monday night. Well, now it's going to be Tuesday night because New Year's is is pushed it back a day. It's uh, it's going to be on a Tuesday night, and you have to go. And the, you know the county has. It's not like you have precincts. You have a in, in a lot of the smaller counties, you have one caucus site at the county seat, and people come from all over the county. And they attend a meeting for about three hours uh, where they listen to speeches and they get a chance to advocate for the candidates and then you vote. So you're not talking about the casual voter who's going to be participating. You're talking about party activists. And no one is doing what we're doing. No one is going out and pressing the flesh. You know, Herman Cain has been to, uh, to Iowa once since the Ames straw poll in the beginning of August. 
and it was sun Saturday night. I came, just to give you an idea, I came to that event um, about 40 minutes before before the, the kickoff and worked, there's a thousand people there. It's called the Faith and Freedom uh, Dinner. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I would encourage you if uh, uh, to, um, to go on our website, ricksantorm.com, and click on my speech uh, on faith and freedom. It, uh, I think it resonated very, very well, and I would encourage you to, to take a look at it. But I was the last of six speakers, all of which spoke for anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. Okay? So I, and just to give you an idea of what I was up against. But I got there early. I worked the room. And, and uh, when the speeches started, I sat there and listened to the speeches. I will admit, I got caught on camera checking the score of the Penn State Northwestern game. <laughs> so, uh, oops. Uh, but nevertheless, we won, so I was happy about that. Uh, and then I and, uh, gave my speech, the last one, and I stayed afterwards and worked the crowd on the way out. You know, Herman Cain came in, spoke, and left. Uh, and that's his only appearance in Iowa since the August straw poll. And he's not scheduled to come back until the week before Thanksgiving. So maybe, maybe candidates like this who sort of drop in and drop out can uh, can win a caucus. But I'll give you a a, a, a little bit of a uh, an understanding. We we the Ames straw poll, which is similar to a caucus in the sense that it's an event where everybody has to come from all over the state to Ames on a Saturday afternoon to vote. And 17,000 people from all over the state came to vote at, a, at over 17,000 at this, at this straw poll. Well, it's a massive undertaking. And Michelle Bachman, Ron Paul, and Tim Pawlenty, who finished one, two, and three in the, uh, in the AIM straw poll, all spent in excess of $2 million on the straw poll. They were running ads, they had, uh, you know, buses. They had bought tickets. They had Randy Travis as the uh, as the uh, uh, as the as the act to bring people to come out. Michelle Bachman did. Uh, you know, Tim Pawlenty had some big restaurant, Dave's Famous, whatever, catering everything. The whole they they put in everything. I spent less than a hundred thousand dollars. I went out. None of them did this. I went out for three weeks and hit over fifty towns. Did town hall meetings in groups of 10, 20, 15, I had one over 100, but most of them were pretty small. And I, I, I let people kick the tires for an hour, hour and a half, ask me questions, and then we asked them to sign up and come to the straw poll. That's what I did. And I came within a, about 500 votes. I was in fourth place. I came within a few hundred votes of third to the point where Tim Pawlenty dropped out of the race. And it just shows you that money isn't gonna buy this race. That we're gonna we're gonna do really well in Iowa. We're gonna surprise everybody. I guarantee you. Take whatever number you see that we have on the polls in Iowa a week out and increase it by 50% at least, and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, because we're gonna have the activists. We're gonna have the people who are for us. Not because, you know, Charles Krauthammer says I'm gonna win, uh, or or some some pollster nationally says we're gonna win. We're gonna win because the people who are for me know why they're for me. And uh, that's, that's what we're excited about. We're excited about running a, a true grassroots campaign uh, about real substance. The people who are for us, they, they're listening to the message of being a strong, consistent conservative, someone who stood up and fought on, frankly, all the issues. National security, I just gave a talk down at the Poinsett Club. I didn't realize I talked this long, but I know a couple people were there. I talked for 45 minutes. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that to you tonight. Um, but on national security, right? Uh, so uh, we talked, to, uh, and, and Lindsey Graham introduced me. And uh, Lindsey said, this is a very interesting introduction. You can back me up on this, right, John? He said, uh, he said, Rick Santorum is the Reagan conservative in this race. He's the only one talking about national security issues the way Ronald Reagan would talk about it. And... He said, quote, the people of South Carolina should support him, and, and folks here should raise it, should give him some money, because he needs to be a voice in this race. Now, in typical Lindsay fashion, a reporter for the Greenville News was there, and afterwards came over to Lindsay and said, Is it, did you just endorse Rick Santorum? He said, no, I just told people to vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not an endorsement. <laughs> so you guys.